So, Terry, uh, this is an important day coming up in a couple of days. Juneteenth is on Monday. You have a particular role here at the museum. I'm wondering if you could tell us about what you do and about some of the programs that are available. Sure. So, I'm the executive director of the Reginald F. Lewis Museum of Maryland African American History and Culture, and we will have a uh, commemoration on Monday, which is the federal holiday. Juneteenth itself is on June 19th, so it shares Father's Day this year, but our activities will be on Monday the 20th, and we will have um, kind of, the theme is education is liberation, and we'll talk a little bit about the history of barbecue, because that was a part of the celebration that they would have. We'll also talk about a statue that is at McDonough School the history of that statue, what it means. And then we'll have some what we call make and takes for the young people. So they'll be able to have uh, arts and craft activities at the museum. And it's all free. So in addition to those things, we have a wonderful exhibit called Men of Change, Power, Triumph, and Truth that talks about African-American men and their contribution to society throughout history. Um, and I think it's important to do this uh, at Juneteenth because people People have just kind of heard about Juneteenth and the fact that um, even though Emancipation Proclamation was signed in January of 19, 1863, um, those in Galveston, Texas, those enslaved people in Galveston, Texas, didn't find out until two and a half years later in 1865. Um, and what's interesting about um, that is that here in Maryland, a border state, as it was, so it was not either in the Confederacy or the Union, but kind of sided with the Confederacy. There were both free and enslaved people, and the enslaved people in Maryland were not freed until 1864. So they too were in, um, in slavery until uh, beyond the Emancipation Proclamation because that was a military document, and thus it only freed those enslaved in the military states, and Maryland was not one of those. So just a bit of interesting history about Maryland as well. Yeah. You, you mentioned something that I think is significant to me and a lot of folks, which is you know, a, a lot of us, I don't think, grew up in school necessarily hearing about Juneteenth and understanding the significance of this day. So. How, how pivotal is it to you that the last couple of years this has become more of a national, not just a national day, a federal holiday, and something that now is obviously more in the public eye? I think it's really critical that people understand the full history of our country. And this is a part of American history. It is not African-American history. Um, it's interesting because I didn't learn this in school either. I had to do study on my own. Um, and that is why I think things like books and museums and libraries are so critical because you can find information in those places that you might not just generally hear on the news or even learn in schools, even though I think schools are doing a much better job of teaching a holistic approach to the history. And to know, you know, to recognize that this is a celebration, but we have to think of it in commemorative terms because we have to always remember that our country enslaved people. And that's not something we should be happy about or proud of. Yet, we should be celebratory that that has ended. Terry Lee Freeman, before we let you go, just so the folks at home know, when is the museum open? When can they access the resources you all have? So they can come to our website, lewismuseum.org, and it has all of our hours. We will be open on Monday, Juneteenth, celebration, a commemoration, and it is free from 10 until 5 p.m.